All right, so what I'm gonna go over is a relief carving. And in order to do a relief carving, you can see I've already got some shapes started. But I'm gonna create some layers. I'm gonna do this first line, it's already traced out. What I do is usually find a shape. So I take a piece of folder paper or notebook paper, excuse me, printer paper, and I'll cut a shape out. So it could be any shape you want. So I start with something sort of leaf-like. Like so. That way it's symmetric on both sides. You can start with any shape you want, circles, anything. Then I line it up on here. So this is the one I used. I line it up. And I just start with it somewhere where I can measure consistently, which is this line that I've uh, added on to my coil pot. And I just trace it. So I'll show you one. I'm gonna do this one in between each of these. that I've already traced. So I just trace it with the Scrafito tool. Small loops on each end. So I just trace it lightly, just in case I miss a line, I need to go back and fix it. Trace both sides. Just make sure I don't move it. Then I'll go back and um, I'm not going to do that one yet because I want to make sure that I do my carving first. So I make sure that it's nice and deep. Now if I messed up a line, I could potentially... I could potentially just press a piece of clay. Like say I got a crooked line somewhere. I could just press clay back in there. Patch it up. And what I usually do is I just kind of leave it and go back to working on everything else for about a, I don't know, 20 minute period. And then later on, I'll go back and carve through that after it's hardened a little bit. The reason I wait is because if the clay's mushy in there and the rest of it's leather hard like it should be. And again, wait till it's leather hard to do this carving in general. But um, if it was mushy, it would just send me through the ravine or the little line that I drew before and kind of mess it up. So now for the actual relief carving. You can see the, the Scrafito tool, when I carve it out, it leaves two uh, sides to the ravine. So you can, you can choose either one. I'm gonna choose the bottom one because my, my layers are gonna be going down. So I'm gonna choose the bottom one and I'm just gonna take my modeling tool and shave off one side. And you can see how I'm scraping down into this. That's why I didn't wanna do the second layer yet. I draw one layer at a time. But I'm shaving that off to where it's nice and clean. And I get a lot of students who do one of two things. They either shave off way too much and they work way too hard, or they lift their modeling tool and they just do this. Okay, it should be kind of level and you're shaving off that whole side. So I wanna make that nice and clean. And I'm not touching this upper tier here. Shave that off, made it nice and clean. I'll do one more. Shave that bottom line. I'm doing the bottom of all of them. I could have done the top, but once I start with one, I stick with it. And I've got kind of a sharp line here. I could use the modeling tool for it if I want to, but I usually use a sponge. So after all this is done, I would just take a wet sponge and just clean up these edges lightly. Don't, don't get too carried away. If you get in there and you really start cleaning with the sponge, it will wipe away your line and it will dull your line. You want a nice sharp line that the glazes can kind of run over and, and do their thing and alter or show the detail depending on if you have a see-through um, glaze or not. Um, other pointers is if you get in, you can't get into these grooves with a sponge, just use a wet paintbrush or a little bit of water. Just kind of dunk it in a water bucket and wipe it off on the table and then just clean up in those grooves. Okay, that's a relief carving and I'll continue going down after I get this first layer done. Keep working my way down and I'll show you the end product.